topic for the evening is going to be breaking the flesh. Thank you. So if you want to take notes, please feel free to take notes. If you're writing it down, please feel free to do that too. So who can, as usual, open question, who can tell me what the meaning of, what's your understanding of breaking the flesh? So somebody says breaking the flesh, what do you understand by it? I would say, oh, sorry. Okay. You go ahead. <laughs> I would say um, not not letting the flesh lead you mm -hmm. now in front of your flesh versus letting it lead you. Okay, perfect, perfect. Anyone else? I was going to say um, bringing it under subjection okay. through like, fasting and denying yourself what you might want mm -hmm. and what's the purpose of it what's the end result what are you trying to achieve by doing that mm -hmm. you're trying to walk in the spirit by doing that <laughs> or be closer to god okay okay anyone else for those that are joining right now, hello, ladies, welcome. I see Felicia's here. So our topic for today is breaking the flesh. Okay, we're still continuing with walking in the spirit. I have a question. I see, okay, I thought her name was pronounced as Osheri, but now I see it's pronounced, it's actually spelled completely differently. So I just wanted to ask you to please um, pronounce your name. Um, it's Ajri. Ajri. Okay, I was completely off, but <laughs> hey, I'm so happy you joined us today. Okay, so breaking the flesh, okay. Last week, who can give us a recap on circumstance versus reality and what you took from that? Anyone? So I don't want to talk the whole time, but <laughs> That's okay. feel free. <laughs> something that really stuck with me and I've I've never heard it explained like this my pastor preached or he preaches the um story in Matthew that we read where the disciples are in the boat with Jesus and yeah. a tempest rises and Jesus is asleep and the disciples are freaking out and you said why do you think Jesus was sleeping it's and I've never thought about it or really I guess cared you know why but you said it's because he knew like he wasn't gonna die he knew yeah. he still had a purpose and so that is something I took away and um something I'm super scared of is the weather like I hate when it's windy I hate when it's raining I'm I used to be terrified of tornadoes so today on my way home from work um <laughs> it was or windy like tree branches were flying and I just kept saying I know I'm not going to die so this is okay like I if I have breath in my body I still have a purpose and mm -hmm. I was I, I, it was just such a different mindset so that blessed me last week amen that's beautiful glory to God hi mm -hmm. Xiaomi thanks for joining us <laughs> I love your hair <laughs> Thank you. I'm sorry that I'm a bit late. I had no to problem. do like some painting, but okay. I'm here. Hi, guys. We just got started. We're just recapping on last week and what everyone oh. kind of took away from that. So, okay, mm -hmm. to jump into today's topic, still walking in the spirit, but specifically breaking the flesh. Like most of you said, you know, bringing your flesh under subjection so that your spirit can lead. Because as we learned last week, if you walk according to the flesh, walk in the things of the flesh, it leads to death, right? And it's enmity against God. 
But if you walk in the spirit, that leads to life. Okay. So when we look at breaking the flesh, we kind of have to look at two things, right? The first one is, who can tell me the difference between sin versus sins? So sin, singular, and sins, plural. I don't think there's a difference. Okay. Because it's like, is one sin is the, is equal to any type of sins. It's the same, like, if you, like, say when I, if you gossip, it's the same as killing somebody. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Anyone else? Then in sense, who thinks there's a difference? Okay, Xiaomi says she doesn't think there's a difference. Anyone else? Who, I, I'll, who I'll thinks take something else? Yes. Mm -hmm. I'll take it. Yes, my first thought that came into my head was sin with like a capital S. Mm -hmm. The sin of all of us that Jesus took on. And then sins are with the plural is like little s that we all do just in our <clears throat> life. Okay. Okay, right. cool. So both of you answered really well. Perfect. So sin and sins. And I'm going to get it from the context of Patricia and what she wrote. Okay. So sin, capital S. Okay. Let me start with sins, right? That's our usual, what we know, right? Right. I mean, the wrongdoings, like Shami mentioned, murder, gossip, all those things, right? They come as, but they come as a result of one main thing, sin. When we look at sin, capital S, we're looking at the nature in which we were born. We know that we were born into a fallen world, okay? We know that we were all products of sin. So think about it as a condition or a state, Okay, so that's why Christ came. That's why last week we learned that anything that born of is born of the flesh is flesh. Okay, so when we were born of the flesh, right? When we were born, we were born into a sinful world, into sin, into flesh. Okay, but then Jesus came and did away with that. So that's why our old man was now done away with. And we became a new creation, okay? So when we look at the flesh was crucified, we don't crucify it daily because no way in the Bible does it say that, right? It doesn't say crucify your flesh daily, just like it doesn't say put on the armor of God daily. When did you take it off? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? <laughs> so many times we wake up saying, I put on the armor of God today and I am... Hey, I can also attest to the same thing. I used to do that all the time, but I didn't know better. So I used to say, today I put on truth. I put on faith. I put on, you know, everything, the gospel of peace. I put, I would literally say that every single day, but I'm like, so why am I taking it off? At yeah. the end of my day, when did I take it off? Mm -hmm. Okay, because it was already put on and I'm supposed to walk in that that was put on, right? So my flesh was crucified with Christ at the cross. So I'm supposed to walk in that and walk in that truth and reality thereof. But now we know that when we became new creations in the book of Galatians chapter five, and we read this last week, but I just wanna again dwell on this just to give us context before we get into our verse today or our reading today. Galatians five from verse, 16. This I say then, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so that you cannot do the things that ye would. So the flesh, the lust there, it's talking about a strong desire. Okay, so we know that the flesh has a strong desire. The desire is that sin desire, right? That condition that we spoke about earlier, that condition we were born into. Okay, so now we know that 
we've been crucified, okay? But now there comes this process that I like to think about breaking the flesh, okay? Breaking the flesh, like um, a few of the ladies mentioned earlier, bringing your flesh under subjection to your spirit so that your spirit can lead and then your soul and then your body instead of the opposite, which is body, soul, spirit. Because if your body is leading, nothing fruitful is going to come from there, okay? So your body, your flesh cannot lead into the path of destruction, into the path of carnality, the system of the world, okay? The sinful state and condition. But you would want it to walk in the condition of the spirit, Christ, which is walking in the spirit, okay? So... We looked at a couple of fruits last week. So there's two ways that you can really think about walking in the spirit. Number one, following the direction and the lead and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Okay. Another way you can look at it as by the fruits of the spirit. So the fruits, who did the homework? Last week's homework. Hands. Okay, two hands. Okay, three, four, smiles. I'll take that smiles as a kinder. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll, I'll show some mercy here. So it's, it's okay. If you haven't done it, I encourage you. For those who have done the assignment, what did you take from it? So I see Cheyenne said she did it. I think who else? Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, I just got from it. Like it was just a whole like overload. What God's really been working on me with like this for like maybe two months now. And mm -hmm. uh, just like, you know, you reap what you sow, you sow into your spirit. You get mm. the benefits of the spirit. You know, the benefits are love, joy, peace but if you sow into the flesh you will reap the benefits of the flesh you will reap you know maliciousness uh, mm. the list the list goes on and it's all about you reap what you sow if you're if you're sowing into spiritual things you know you're gonna reap spiritual things but mm. you know this the flesh is death the spirit is life mm. um and i've realized that the flesh is just is just selfish just selfishness it's mm -hmm. what I want. It's what I want. Yeah. But the spirit is what the things God wants us for us. So it's about denying yourself, de denying your passions, your desires, your lusts of mm -hmm. yourself. And, and it also goes back to like also loving your neighbor, you know, and like putting them above yourself. It's all about is what I just realized is, is like all about deny yourself denying those passions those desires and 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 reaping the things that you just you know doing things you don't necessarily want to do going against your body yeah so okay. that's just what i've learned from it too okay. i i think of it as the flesh is the short game and the spirit is the long game the flesh wants what it wants right now you know, it's not thinking about anything else, mm -hmm. any repercussions. It's not thinking about the consequences or, at all. It's right now. Mm. And the spirit is all about the long game, the family, the legacy, the praying for family, praying for friends. What can I do? Where should I serve? You know? Mm. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you, ladies, for sharing that. So, we have those two ways now for you to start evaluating, right? Following the lead of the spirit. Some people may be like, okay, but how do I know I'm following the lead of the spirit? How do I know I'm following the, you know, that's a real question. How do I know that I'm following the direction of the Holy Spirit? Firstly, does it align with scripture, right? That's your always your basic first quickest way, even to know your thoughts, right? Something that I'm thinking right now, even though it must, even though it's a good thing, because here's the thing. Both bad thoughts and good thoughts, you have to take them captive. Not just the bad ones, the good ones. Because they may be good thoughts, but they're not 
it's not aligning with God's mm -hmm. word. It's not aligning with him. And you have to bring those thoughts under obedience. So good thoughts and bad thoughts, you have to take them captive. So we spoke about three things, right? Soul being made up of your mind, your will, your emotion. Okay. Last week, we spent a lot of time dwelling on, you know, on that. Today, I want to kind of look at, and this one is one that we kind of neglect, but it's also a very important one, an important area of your soul. That is your will. Okay. That is your strength. That is your ability to do. Okay. Something. Because your flesh plays a big part in it. Remember, I said that your spirit, even though your spirit wants to go to church on Sunday, but your flesh doesn't want to. And if, you're, if your soul is not obedient to your spirit, guess what? Your spirit cannot drag your, your body to church. <laughs> okay? Your spirit can be like prompting you, like, Sonia, go. Bridget, go, but it can't forcefully take your body to the church building. That's why the middleman, the soul, is the one that needs to yield and say, okay, let's go. And now your soul gives instruction to your for your body to physically do the movement. Is this making sense? Come on, yeah. Right? So even though your spirit wants to, right, do the things of God, that's why this verse now makes sense that says, the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. Even though your spirit really wants to go to church, it cannot force your body to do that because you have free will. Okay, remember, your spirit is now one with the Holy Spirit. Because it says, ye that is joined to the Lord is one spirit with the Lord, right? We read that verse last week. So God's not going to force you to do something. Right? Remember, he doesn't control, he leads. Mm -hmm. So he will lead. So how do I know that I'm walking in the spirit? He will lead me. But it's up to me to decide, okay, am I going to yield? Am I going to do this or not? I spoke to a lady last week and she told me on how she was, she had to go for rehearsals for church, right? But her flesh had this weakness of just saying yes to every opportunity to eat out. <laughs> if friends say hey let's grab pizza she said pizza was her weakness let's and the enemy knew that so her friends would be like hey let's grab pizza after work and she would just be like okay 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 <laughs> right the flesh wanted it okay okay and the long-term result was that she ended up missing on out on her choir rehearsals right she ended up missing out her work, her assignment for the kingdom of God because she couldn't bring her flesh. She just thought it's just pizza. One time won't hurt, right? And that's what the flesh does. Oh, just, just relax. You know, when you had a long work week or even when you have a cold, anybody ever had a cold and it's praying is so hard, <laughs> right? And you're just like, man, you know, God understands. It's just... And then day two of the cold, you know, it's just, it's still, oh, it's just, right? So you think you're taking a break because you called off sick at work. You think you're also calling off sick in the kingdom of God. You think you're also taking a break, right? So then she ended up disobeying God because she was obeying the flesh, so you cannot serve both of them. Either you will tell one, hey, listen, uh-uh, we're going to do the work of God now. We're going to listen to the spirit. We're going to obey. And that one is the flesh that you have to tell that to. Nope, not today. <laughs> okay. So we're going to look at a couple of the fruits here. Verse 22, Galatians 6. But the fruits of the spirit, love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance against such there is no law. Okay. 
So if I am struggling with being in the grocery line, simple stuff. I'm going to use very simple daily um, examples, right? Out of the four corners of the church structure. So this can kind of be realistic to you. If I am in a grocery line at the grocery store, okay, I'm a Kroger and that self-checkout line is so long and I am losing my temper, okay? I am just like, oh, trying to find the quickest way out, getting angry because I'm in this long line. I have things to do, okay? (laughs) I have places to go to. Guess what? I'm not gentle. I'm not long suffering. I'm not walking in the spirit. Okay. So even though yesterday or the day before yesterday was Sunday and I was at church and I was quoting, I'm patient, I'm long suffering, I'm all these things. Now the test comes when I'm out in the real world, something as simple as the grocery store. Okay. Let's see. Are you patient? Okay. Let's see. Are you long suffering? Right. Anything that opposes these fruits means it's the flesh. So quickest way to evaluate, right? Am I being led by the spirit, right? Is he guiding me? Is that that I'm being led to? Is it it aligning with the word of God? That's very important. No matter how good that thought is, is it aligning, okay? Secondly, looking at the fruits so I can never keep peace. Right. If I don't have peace, then that means I'm walking in the flesh. Something's off because go back to James chapter five. Right. It says that a tree cannot yield both a bad fruit and a good fruit. Right. I think it talks about, I think, a fig tree and a thorn or I don't know, whatever it says. Okay, But for instance, an apple tree will not produce oranges and apples. A grape tree will not produce figs and grapes. A banana tree will certainly not produce bananas and tomatoes. Only one, (laughs) okay? So when you walk in the spirit, you shouldn't be producing hate and love. It's impossible. Okay, only one. So breaking the flesh getting into that. The first thing I want us to look at, I'm going to give us three subtopics today. Number one, right? Key to breaking the flesh. I have to ask myself, have I been practicing distractions? Okay. Practicing distractions. So your mind is made up of two parts. And I think it was either Miss Frederica last week Well, someone spoke about the subconscious and the conscious mind. I don't remember who it was, but somebody mentioned that. Okay. So your mind is broken down into those two parts, conscious and subconscious. Okay. Let me give you an example. When you wake up every morning and you go to the restroom, right? You take your toothbrush and you take toothpaste and you start brushing your teeth. You're not really putting thought into that, right? You're not saying, oh, wait, this is the upper side. This is the, wait, how do I brush my teeth? Okay, you just do it. It's like automated. It's like in your subconscious, you just go. You just go. Next thing you're in the shower, you already like just know what you wash first, your hair, your whatever it is. Okay, subconscious, because you've been doing it for so long. You've been practicing that for so long that it's in your subconscious mind now. Okay. In the beginning, when you were probably young, a baby, you had to learn, how do I do this? So you got the hang of it. Okay. So the question today is, have I been practicing distractions? That these distractions are so a part of me. I've been practicing them for so long that they're now in my subconscious. It's like automatically. Right? And if the answer is yes, that means a shift needs to be made. So what are practicing distractions? I wake up, I'm so used every day, the first thing I'm going to do is check my phone. 
when I wake up. First thing. Oh, but it's important. What if I have an email? What if, I have, what if the world caught fire? <laughs> right? <laughs> what if the growth, what if there's a snowstorm, right? There was this snowstorm alarm this past weekend and I'm still waiting for it, <laughs> right? Everyone was in the grocery store buying out the whole store, <laughs> okay? No rest, fear, <laughs> right? So I wake up in the morning, I check my phone. Wait, what, what if my family is looking for me? I used to do this so much. Last, early last year, when I first moved, okay? I would check my phone when I wake up early in the morning. First thing, I would check my phone. Guess what happens when I check my phone? Somebody is sick. 10 people are asking for prayer. My mm -hmm. bank is calling me. I get news of somebody close, passed away, crazy stuff. Things that I cannot even control from where I am. <laughs> so me seeing that at that moment or an hour later is not going to change my life. But it's going to determine how the rest of my day goes this making sense so I would wake up practice distraction the first thing and then my mind's racing 100 instead of my first thought being wow lord this is the day the lord has made I will rejoice and be glad in it I decided to check my phone and stress now even if I go and go into prayer and reading after that my mind is just thinking okay I need to do this wait so at 10 I'll call the bank then I'll go to my mom. Then I'll do that, right? That's happening. But I'm supposed to be in the presence of God. It's supposed to be me and him that time. So now I'm throwing all the petitions of everything I've read this morning on my phone. And then I'm like, God, please do this. Please do this. Please do this. Please do this. Okay, thank you. Bye. Go. Meanwhile, I didn't even give chance for God to speak back remember it's not a one-sided conversation so did I even just take a moment to just be quiet okay so I had to come to that realization I was like what is wrong every day right I would fall asleep with my phone I'm sharing because it's the truth I would fall asleep with my phone scrolling on my phone right looking at emails, but I practiced it for so long. I was practicing this distraction that it became part of my subconscious. I didn't even realize that I was doing it. Okay, think about something else. And here's the thing, the flesh always wants to do the things that are not beneficial to you. If I wake up at three in the morning and the flesh says, hey, ice cream sounds so good right now. Guess what? I'm running to that fridge. But if I wake up and the spirit says, you know, prayer sounds so good right now. I'm like, mm, I got to wake up early. <laughs> Think about it. The flesh and the spirit are at war. Okay. All of a sudden, I can wake up at three o'clock, suddenly see, oh, wait, who, whose call did I miss before I put my phone down? Who messaged me at three in the morning? <laughs> right? I just need a snack right now. Go eat. Even I used to bring it in bed before I was married. <laughs> I would bring it in bed, snack in bed, binge watch Netflix, eight hours straight. The next morning, wake up, pick up where I left off, continue, okay? Practicing this distraction. But the moment the spirit just prompts something to you, hey, maybe pray, it's, it becomes the most difficult thing ever. Hey, go for a walk. No, my joints, my knees don't function. Nothing works. Okay, so there needs to be a literal shift that has to happen from I've been practicing distractions for so long that I now need to start practicing the things of God. And it's going to be hard. 
in the beginning. But the same way the things of the flesh were embedded into your subconscious, the same way you have to do the things of God so repetitively and so precisely and so hard that it eventually becomes a part of your subconscious. Just kind of like how lots of you, yep, go ahead. That's where the word comes in, like when they say Jesus is not a religion, Jesus is a relationship. Mm -hmm. That's kind of what it what it is like when uh -huh. you start living like yes for God. It's a relationship, like literally how you treat any like your husband or yeah. it's it's around twenty four seven. Yeah, it's not a task. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's not a task. It's, it's on a my to do list. Yeah, it's not just for one for a few hours on a Sunday. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Perfect. Yeah, it's like every day, every single day, mm. right? Every single day. So I have to start practicing the things of God so much that it becomes. It's going to be hard in the beginning, right? But think about it. Just like someone who's in sin, that fornication, the first time you did it, right? Then that person goes back, do it again, till it becomes so a part of them that they don't even feel convicted about it. Then you know it's a serious problem, hmm. right? But there was a habit that was built till it became so easy, right? Someone that smokes be till it becomes so easy that you just, you do it. You know, every day before you drink coffee or whatever, you have to smoke. Right? So the things of God have to become so embedded within, not my conscious mind. The aim is in my subconscious mind. Because my conscious mind will be like, okay, it's a task. And like, I'm aware of what I'm doing. Of course, it's going to be like that in the beginning. But eventually, it's like, it's just there. It's like picking up a toothbrush, toothpaste, brushing your teeth. You're not putting thought into how daunting it is. It's tiring. Wow, brushing my teeth takes away literally five minutes of my day. I have so many other things to do. No, you do it because you know it's necessary. Okay, I want us to look at Matthew chapter nine, verse, no, Matthew chapter six, verse 19 to 21. Anyone who's there, please read. Matthew 6, 19 to 21. Should I just go ahead? Yeah. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Amen. Thank you. So I've spoken about this verse before to some of you. Some of you don't know, so I'll just repeat it again, right? When I read this, right, I look at that treasure in a different context. I look at that treasure as my time. Okay? Time. T-I-E-M. T-I-M-E. Yeah. Yeah, that's okay? good. Yeah. Time. Why? If you go to the richest person in the world, most wealthiest person in the world, and you say, hey, can I please have an hour of your day? Can I have five minutes of your day? Do you know what this person's going to tell you? You are crazy. Firstly, what value are you bringing to me? If you're not adding any value to this millionaire, they're not going to give you five seconds of their time. <laughs> right? Think about it. Why? Because their time is so valuable. In fact, they say that time is money. Okay? So, looking at time, treasure here as your time, right? And I want to read that, reread that to you. For where your time is, there your heart will be. In order to practice distractions, it means that your time is somewhere. Mm -hmm. I mentioned this, I think, in the, our December study. 
everyone on earth has one thing, okay, not one thing, but there's something that's in common with every single person, every person, no matter your age, your gender, your race, your location, something, and that's that you have 24 hours in a day. Every person. But it's how you spend it that matters. That wealthy person says, nah, I'm not giving you five minutes of my time <laughs> unless you're bringing value to me. Right? It's because they understand the value that time carries. Okay? So if I have to now evaluate where my time goes in a day, just break it down. What am I spending my time on? Where does my time lie? Think about another thing. People, if we take someone like the creators of Facebook and Netflix and all these distractions, <laughs> okay? Because that's what they are, distractions, unless you're using them for the kingdom of God. But anyway, if you look at these people, you'll realize that they understand that time is a treasure. Mm -hmm. They've decided to capitalize off of our time to bring themselves treasure because they understood if we can get a million people in the world to spend four hours a day on our creation of an app or whatever, right? What does that mean? It means I'm going to profit off of someone's time. That's all they needed. Mm -hmm. Netflix understood that if we create something that's so binge worthy that it will take someone's eight, right? Think about it. Just another episode. Oh my word, it's so good. Just another episode. Just one more. That's why I hate series so much. <laughs> <laughs> a season will go where it's like Ooh, just the next one another season right a movie is controllable because when the movie's done you're like okay i'm i'm gonna get up mm -hmm. but when it comes to series mm -mm, decept deceptive okay but back to the topic so where your time is so where are you deciding to invest your time today in the things of the world or in the things of god Okay, another challenge, just go, just break down. Let's look at your time apps on your phone. Right, time limits. How much time do I spend? Okay. Because when you understand this, you start understanding, maybe, let me pick on someone. Joy, okay. Maybe God has been telling Joy, I know that she's she's saying, so I'm going to use that example, right? God has been telling Joy she has to start training or writing music for her album that she's going to drop, right, in 20, end of 2024, okay? But if she is spending her whole day and night doing everything else but that, that assignment that God gave her, it's not going to come to pass. So then she might even say, you know, I'm just waiting for God. Meanwhile, God's waiting for her to start practicing distractions mm -hmm. and to start investing her time wisely. Somebody else, maybe, maybe who else is here? Brandy. Okay. Hey, I want you to start this business. Because this business is going to help people. It's going to glorify God. It's going to do whatever it is, okay? But then meanwhile, all she does is, and this is not, these are examples. So it's not, they're not actually doing this, okay? <laughs> so all she's doing every single day is waking up, scrolling on the phone because the flesh is so weak, deceiving. Just, I can't do it. I don't want to do it. Fear kicks in. Procrastination kicks in. All these lies start kicking in and she believes them. Meanwhile, God is saying, hey, you know, take time. Read a book on finances, financial management. Read a book on 
business planning, starting a business. So she knows that God has told her you're going to own this big business, right? Because here's the thing, God can give you this dream or this vision or tell you, hey, this is what I'm going to do. But you have to play your part too. Because if I'm just going to sit around and think, okay, it's just going to drop from the sky, I'm wrong. Because if she's just thinking that that business is going to drop from the sky, she's wrong, right? Then she just sits years. God's told me I'm going to own a successful business. God's told me I'm going to own a successful business. So what are you doing about it? Nothing. Okay. Do you know how to write a business plan? No. Do you know how to send out invoices? No. <laughs> okay. Do you know how to use a computer? Nope. I don't even care about that. But God's going to give me a business that's such a big blessing. Think about it. <laughs> okay. Another one I love to use. Okay. And this one was a one for me personally. Okay. God's going to give me a husband one day. God's going to give me a husband. I know it. Okay, but do you clean your room? Something simple. Just these are random examples. Do you clean your room? No, but God's going to give me a, a husband. Okay, in what room is he going to sleep in? How's the condition of the room going to be? How's the condition of the house going to be? Okay. God's told me I'll own a successful restaurant one day. But I can't cook, but I know he said he'll <laughs> give me a successful restaurant. But I'm burning water. <laughs> you didn't hear from God then, I don't think. Right? <laughs> <laughs> right? So an instruction was given, but distractions, the flesh had more control. Because the flesh was comfortable. The things of God are never going to be. I was telling my friend that today. It's never going to be comfortable. You're going to be put in uncomfortable situations. Okay. I'm always like, whenever Josh and I go to a store or something, he like prays for every single person. I'm just there like, okay. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm like, mm, this is awkward. <laughs> He doesn't care, okay? And it's only because I've been put in those uncomfortable situations that I'm now going to be like, okay, I'll pray for someone. But for a year in my prayer time, I'm saying, God, I want to help more people. I want to pray for people. I want to heal the sick. And then he sends the sick. What are you going to do about it? Feel awkward? <laughs> right? So everywhere we go, he's just like, Mm, I'm going to pray for that person. I'm going to do that. I'm just there like, okay. <laughs> we'll be sitting at a restaurant. I'll be like, this is so awkward. Why are you doing this? <laughs> okay. But he doesn't care because he understands, right? There's souls, there's a kingdom. He's never going to let anything stop him from that. <laughs> just think about that seriousness of it. So that seriousness, what has God called me to do? Okay. God's called me to write. Did I start typing those pages? Did I start writing down those ideas? Or am I just saying, nope, he's going to do that. I know it. He has a plan. He has a purpose for sure. But every day I wake up investing my time rather on these things that are going to build me and equip me and help me i'm using that time to build other people's dreams i'm using my time to build other people's okay so practicing distractions has to change to where i'm practicing the things of god the things of the spirit of God, the things God says. It has to become so easy, right? Like back to the example of Josh. For him, it's so easy. He's been practicing it for so long. For me, it's still in my conscious, conscious mind. 
okay? It's not in my subconscious. It was in my conscious mind. But the more I would practice, it would just go there, which just like, I'm just doing it. It's like breathing. How many of you for the past 10 minutes have thought about, is there enough oxygen? <laughs> None of you, till I mentioned it. <laughs> how many of you thought, wait, am I still breathing? Wait, how do I even breathe? Think about it, right? They told us that we need oxygen. Everybody went with that narrative. <laughs> okay, I use oxygen to breathe. And you don't think about it ever. You've been told that? Cool. Okay? Think about when you're driving a car, when you first learned to drive the car, right? So where I'm from, we drive a lot of manual cars. And Shami can attest to this. <laughs> right? So we drive like stick shift. What is it called? Gear, whatever. Stick gear. I don't know what it is what is called right manual instead of automatic cars a lot of manual cars so when you're first learning to drive you have to literally think do math okay i have to put the clutch in first and i have to release it a little bit and i have to accelerate and my car has to be in the first gear and then from there i have to launch off and after a while i have to move it to the second gear it's like so in your conscious you're paying attention to every move so your car doesn't switch off same thing with the automatic car you first have to look at Where's my reverse located? Where's my drive? Where's my park? But after a while, you don't even look at it. When you're driving, you just know where the brake is. You stop, you pull it. You just automatic. Because you've practiced it for so long. Okay, that's the first one. To breaking the flesh, right? To stop practicing distractions. So again, homework. Go sit down this week. Look, where have I been practicing distractions? Even if it's that I work eight to five, I can still always say, okay, when I go into work, my first 15 minutes, okay, simply 15 minutes, I'm going to use it to write that song. One word a day, in six months can make a difference than zero words a day in six months. So you may be thinking, I don't have time to write this thing. The next day, the next day, I don't have time. I don't have time to do this business right now, right? Maybe someone likes baking, baking that one cupcake. <laughs> <laughs> In six months can make a difference than no cupcakes in six months. Because if you don't start, it will just be win. Okay, tomorrow, 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 tomorrow. And we never want to end up in a place of a situation of King Saul and King David. We know what happened. Well, he didn't take his assignment seriously, serious. And guess what? God said, nope, another one. Because God's like, I need, we, we got to get stuff done. We have to move. And there Saul was enjoying the fame of people hyping him up. <laughs> okay. All these things. And he wasn't listening to God's instruction. He was listening to men. He was listening to the flesh instead of the spirit. Mm -hmm. And said that God took, the spirit of God left him. Because he said, nope, my way. So flesh will always say my way, like Cheyenne mentioned. Spirit will always be like, nope, self-denial. This hurts right now. I really wanted this self-denial. Ah, I know I'm right. I need to prove this point. I know I'm right. Self-denial. Okay. Next one. To breaking the flesh. Self-discipline. Self-discipline. This one is the hardest fight 
one of the most hardest fights that you cannot rely on another person. What do I mean? If I am struggling with an issue that's demonic, right? I can go somewhere. Someone can pray for me, right? The demons can get casted out of me. But if I'm struggling with a problem of self-discipline, guess who the only person is that can fix that? You, right? Me. So that's the hardest fight because it's against you. So that one, it doesn't require you spending hours doing spiritual warfare at midnight. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Binding every whatever. <laughs> you. Second Timothy 1 7. Can somebody read the NIV version? Second Timothy chapter one, verse seven. For God did not give us a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power, of love, and of self-discipline. Okay. Can somebody Google the meaning of self-discipline? And can somebody else, some can Google, others can say what you understand. Probably you guys have the answer. What do you understand? Self-discipline. You want somebody else to do it? <laughs> I Googled it. Okay. And it says, the ability to control one's feelings and overcome one's weaknesses, mm -hmm. the ability to pursue what one thinks is right despite temptations to abandon it. Okay. Perfect. Right? Self-control. As a believer... I need to have self-control. As a believer, I need to have self-control. As a child of God, as a woman, I need to have self-control. Says God didn't give us a spirit to be timid, a spirit of fear, but of power, love, right? Some verses say sound mind. Some say self-discipline. I need to be disciplined. To break the flesh, I need to be disciplined. So am I disciplined in my prayer? And let me tell you, self-discipline in prayer doesn't only look like doing my routine every day. Because then that's just routine. <laughs> okay. In the beginning, when I started it, it was, of course, challenging and I had to discipline myself. But if I'm doing the same routine for a year, what's the next level that I'm pushing myself to? If I've been praying only for five minutes, I cannot go beyond that. It's only five minutes. What's the next level? So I've only been able to pray for five minutes, the whole 2023. This year, I'm going to be disciplined. I'll pray for six minutes. <laughs> that one minute makes a difference. Trust me. Okay. Or if I'm standing, right? And now I'm like, okay, I just have to uh, think about it. When you're praying, so many things happen. You start shopping in your mind. And here's the interesting thing. In your mind, you're like already in the grocery store. <laughs> During your prayer time, in your mind. But yet it says that God knows our thoughts in our hearts, in our intentions, that he answers even before we speak. So we think 
come thinking that we're deceiving God, right? By doing lip service, but that time my mind is out, out, out of sync. I'm in the grocery store, I'm in vacation, I'm feeding the kids, I'm changing diapers, right? But out of my mouth, I'm praying. But yet it says that God knows my thoughts. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? So I'm thinking I'm, I'm being sleek. I'm just playing myself. <laughs> I'm like, wow, well, I'm standing here 20 minutes straight. None of, not one thought. Okay. So if I've been praying for five minutes during 2023, this year, I'm going to push myself. Self-discipline, no matter what. If I've only been able to get up at seven, Cheyenne, tell me about what happened when you started waking up early. What did it look like before? What time were you waking up? What changed? Um, I was just waking up. Like, I would wake up with with Haven. I like to put him on the bus. And then I would try to go back to sleep, like, before, you know, Sissy got up and stuff like that. So I'd get a little bit more sleep. But ever since I've been waking up earlier, like, it's it's easy to pray, like, to have that time to pray to to pick my top priorities to like during the day and and to start you know like like taking better care of myself the kids like being able to wake up earlier so you know, like I can get things to get things like to like stop to get things done like like get him dressed and like it was really, it's it's really hard at first, and you know it's just really helped like my relationship with God because you know I'm not distracted yeah. with the kid. You know when I'm waking up with them, I'm not distracted. Like I have that one on one like special time. Yeah. Instead, yeah. um, there was something else I was gonna say, um, but. It's it's just really helped and like figuring out a routine also like when I wake up and you know like sticking to that and yeah there's something else okay that's good right, hey, right. So, right here. <laughs> for the longest time she was waking up waking up at whatever time probably nine, 11, whatever time, right? And then she had to have discipline to be like, this is not working for me. <laughs> so is my sleep worthy? Am I going to sacrifice that extra hour of sleep? What am I going to do? Okay. It was hard, but she had to have discipline. So it may be like, I've been, God's been telling me to wake up early. The whole of last year, you're saying that God's telling me to wake up early. Okay, so what are you going to do about it? That's my favorite question. Anytime somebody comes to me, I'm like, okay, so what are you going to do about it? <laughs> I probably asked a lot of you that. So what do you want to do about it? Caroline, I've been trying to eat healthy. So what, what are you going to do about it? Right, because remember, I once we get gluttony and lust out, I cannot do anything then my part's done. <laughs> right? Okay, so I ask the person, so what are you gonna do about it? Let's talk. Okay, I'm lazy. I cannot get up. Okay, let's get that laziness out. Spirit's gone. Okay, so what now? Because it's that habit that was so it's like intertwined, like morphed with that spirit. That it became you, but who you thought you were isn't who you are. And it's going to take self-discipline to start breaking that habit. Okay, something simple. Wake up. The flesh hates it. Remember, it's so easy for your flesh to stay up all night. 
you will tell yourself from tomorrow, I'm going to start waking up at five in the morning. Suddenly, the entire night, there's things to do. <laughs> okay. Suddenly you go to bed, flesh doesn't want to. And then your alarm goes off. It's, oh, am I really going to wake up now? I only had two hours of sleep. But there has to be that breaking, that initial breaking that takes place for that new habit to be formed. Right, Chai? And the reason I asked her to share that was because a couple of weeks she told me it's so hard waking up early because there was a pattern that she was used to, but it had to be broken. Eventually it got easier. All right. Bridget would share with me that she struggled so much reading, right? The Bible. I said, what are you going to do about it? Mm -hmm. Okay. She used to like listening to the audio Bible. And she's like, okay, let's try it. Self-discipline. What did self-discipline allow her to do? It allowed her to bring her to a place where I'm going to read my Bible. I'm going to show up and read it. Even if it was so hard. I'm going to show up and read it to a point where she now messages me asking me questions. <laughs> right? Saying, oh, she, she even answers herself. She'll ask me a question. Hey, wait, you know, this says this. And then a couple of minutes later, she'll be like, you know what? This. So something that she struggled with for years, what did self-discipline allow? It allowed that to be broken. So to be, to live So back to my original point of, as believers, we need to be self-disciplined. Proverbs 29, verse Proverbs 21, 18, where there is no vision, the people perish, but he that keeps the law, happy is he, okay? Where there is no vision, the people perish. Many times the reason self-discipline is hard is because we do not even know where, what it is that we want to do in life. We do not know what God wants. Okay. But the minute I start drawing close to God, the minute I start seeking, he starts giving me understanding. He starts saying, hey, this is what I want you to do. Hey, this is where we should go to. And then self-discipline, because I understand that it's not even about me no more, but it's about my creator and what my creator wants to do how God has to be glorified. That it doesn't become about me no more. So am I going to let these distractions, the flesh, stand in the way of God? Stand in the way of God's vision for my life. Stand in the way of God's plan. Okay? So try it. Again, evaluate the areas, just like last week's assignment. I hope you ladies are doing these assignments. Please, it will change you. Just like last week's assignment, sit, write down. I had to do that for myself, to write down and say what I have to be disciplined in. And then I was able to go back and check the list. Actually, have a... Have it right here. Let me see. I want to show you. So here I would have, I know it's silly, but it helped me. Okay. I would have a book here and I don't even know if you can see it. And on this would be a list of things that I was like, I need to have be more disciplined. Okay. And the date here is 13 May, 2023. And I would have a line and I had week one, week two, week three. And I will start checking, how did I do this week in that area? 
And I'll be honest, I marked myself zero procrastination. I said zero points because <laughs> I was procrastinating, <laughs> right? After week four, I look at myself and I'm like, wow, is this really where I want to be? Am I going to be disciplined? It's silly, right? But if I couldn't look and say, wow, right? Another one, mouth control. Week one, zero. <laughs> <laughs> week two, okay, we did a bit good. Three, week four, I would mark myself, give myself points. Okay, and I would say, is this really what I want to do, where I want to be? When somebody told me, advised me to do that, I was like, man, they're tripping. Because just like if I go to the gym and work out, I go onto a scale, right? Or I look at my muscles or whatever it is you're measuring yourself with. And you'll be like, okay, this is how much I weigh. That's my goal. If I want to gain weight, if I want to lose weight, that's my goal. But without vision of knowing, wait, I want to weigh whatever pounds. I want to weigh two pounds. Without knowing how much I currently weigh, I cannot achieve two pounds. How can I track it without knowing where I currently am? So you have to be realistic with myself. Where am I? Where do I want to be? Without vision, the people perish. Right? Mm -hmm. Can and I say something? Yeah, go ahead. Can I add? Um, I also had I also did the same thing, mm. but I kept like not staying with it. Yeah. And then the Holy Spirit convicted me mm -hmm. and he said, He was like, How much do you love God? Mm. I was like, I love God, but it was like so your discipline equals to how much you love God. So it's like your obedience equals to how much you love God. And mm -hmm. God puts the spirit of discipline on you. You carry his spirit. So mm -hmm. you know, how are you playing like this? Mm -hmm. That's how I, that's what helped me a lot was my love for God equals to my discipline to the assignment that is put on my life. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. Remember this discipline thing, you're not doing it by yourself. Like she you're said, not. God gave you that spirit of discipline. Why? Because he knew that you needed it. So am I going to use what God gave me? Or am I going to pack it in a little closet and just leave it there? All right. Think about it. When you get a gift, I always say it's so interesting when people are like, oh, you know, I'm not going to use the gift of the spirit or whatever or this gifts of the spirits not for today and not for me when someone gives you a gift it's up to you to use it okay if christy gives sonia a gift today it's up to her to use it she'll be like hey do you, did you like that shirt i got you i haven't worn it yet okay a month. Hey, do you like that shirt? That's all she can do. Like, you know, ask and remind her that you have that. Use it. But it's up to her to decide, you know what? I'm going to take it and put it on and I'll use it. If not, it just stays there. Not fulfilling what it was supposed to. Because maybe that t-shirt said, Jesus saves. And if she wore that as she's walking, when she's at work, People will see, read, someone was touched by it. But if she kept her gift hidden, remember we spoke about that, right? Our works as vessels, what type of work are you going to produce? Wooden work, golden work, silver work, what? Okay, so self-discipline is important. If I'm trying to, one thing that helped me so much, and I think probably Shami or even my sister Emma remembers, right? There was a time... I think it was in 2021 or 2020. And I just received my gift of tongues and it was awkward. 
That's what many people say. It's awkward. They try it once and like, oh, never again. I'm not using this, right? I put on a shirt. I don't really like the color on me. Nope, never using it again. Same thing, right? Try to like, mm, mm, okay, I'll do it again, right? And then someone said, hey, put a timer on. Time yourself 10 minutes. Don't get out of that room till you pray in tongues for 10 minutes. I was like, 10 minutes, I can hardly do 10 seconds. What are they saying? <laughs> okay. But I was like, I'm going to try it and be disciplined. I put that timer on 10 minutes. Right? This person told us, 10 minutes. Just put a timer on, speaking thanks, 10 minutes. And then from there, the next day, okay, you have 10 minutes now, 30 minutes, 30 minutes. Oh my word, you are, wow, nope. <laughs> Put a timer on, try 30 minutes, right? So I'm even encouraging you, try it one minute. If you're struggling, one minute. Because you put that alarm till you hear that alarm go off. Then you're like, okay. <laughs> But if not, every day I was just like, mm, you know, it's not really for me. I'll just, I was believing lies, right? But there was a point of discipline till it became part of my subconscious that I don't even think about it no more. I don't think about an awkward thing, whatever it is. Just like when you started speaking for babies, they start small, mama. Right? No, that's what they all say. No. But eventually it grows. That vocabulary grew. Right? So, first one, stop practicing distractions. Second one, self discipline. It's our keys to breaking the flesh, walking in the spirit. Okay, before I get into the third one, I want to dwell on one more thing of how do I break the flesh. Fasting is so important. Fasting is like the basic key to breaking your flesh. Basic most basic why because the bible says that okay and if someone can find that verse in the meantime that the spirit of a man is like a candlestick unto the lord right searching the inmost parts of your belly also says that We don't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes, thank you. Okay. Out of, I don't know what happened. So also says, out of my belly shall flow rivers of living water. Okay. So the Bible is revealing a key thing you're in a mystery you're right if it's kind of indicating that right my belly right my spirit man the fruit it produces flows from here it says that the lord uses my spirit as a candlestick to search the inmost parts of my belly okay now i understand also something that's very important is Anyone that cannot control their belly cannot control what the enemy throws at them. If I cannot say no to food, what makes me think I'm going to resist major schemes and tactics of the enemy? I cannot say no to food. So if I'm struggling to control my belly, I'm going to struggle to control spiritual matters. That's why fasting is so beautiful. 
because it helps break the flesh. Okay, go ahead. Okay, thought someone had a question. Oh, may I please say something? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so um, I was thinking about like, um, just to piggyback off what you said about um, not being distracted. Mm -hmm. um, there was like, I remember I was going through a period where um, in my life where it's like I had all these distractions but it was like more so from like negative family members that I was dealing with at the time and it was like they would just be so negative all the time and just they never supported me and if I would have like fed into that negativity as far as <laughs> not wanting to have goals for myself and not wanting to step out of my environment that I was living in at the time because it was very toxic mm -hmm. a lot of like gang violence a lot of um you know people just selling drugs and everything if I did not take that self-discipline and if I did not have that self-confidence as far as staying focused on what I knew <laughs> subconsciously that I was bigger that I was bigger than my issues and my problems that I had that I had at home so if I didn't take those steps steps as far as applying for that job or yeah. graduating high school mm. and not becoming a stereotype mm. as my family may have wanted me to be or society may have wanted me to become mm. then I would have like felt and like went down a more so of a fleshly path and not and I'm not saying that to say this that I didn't make any mis mistakes along the way yeah. as I was coming out of that journey but I've definitely made mistakes and I've learned from it but I didn't like stay stuck like I didn't stay in that box mm. if that makes sense. so it's just it's very important for us to um focus on the spirit and our subconscious and what what God wants us to do in this lifetime because like yeah. through my journey and everything that I've gone through um just to be in a space now where I can like help people like mm -hmm. it's um like it's really given me a lot of discernment and I really do appreciate God for putting me through that journey because now I can look back and be like okay that's why I went through that mm -hmm. and it was for a reason and this is why it is that's beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing that. That's really beautiful yeah. and inspiring too. That's a good point. Like she had to have discipline, right? To graduate, to apply for the jobs, despite what the family said, despite what people said, despite what was happening, despite her circumstance. Remember last week we spoke about circumstance versus reality. Despite that circumstance, Okay, she had to have discipline, self-discipline, right? So fasting, easiest way. It's the most, you'll find it's even funny that yeah. on a regular day, say you missed out breakfast, lunch, dinner, because you, you were just too busy, okay? You're fine. You can go hungry. You're fine, but the moment intentionally you're fasting, it's like you've never ate a day in your life. <laughs> and you're angry and you're all these things are just, you're like, whoa, what is going on? Okay. It shows you the power of it. Right. And then you should also bring yourself to that reality for those of you who struggle with fasting. Who knows what's the maximum time that someone can go without food? 40 days. 40 days. So what makes me think that going six hours, Think just think about it, right? The trick the enemy plays. Maximum days, 40 days, someone that someone um, can go without food. But the enemy, when I'm fasting, one day, Oh, you're going to die. Look, you're fainting. You're so weak. Okay. 
right? Something else, if you're pregnant, please don't fast. <laughs> I mean, yeah, please eat, <laughs> right? But the line, right? But a week ago, you went even two days without eating because you were so busy with work. But now you're fasting intentionally. It's like, wait, look. Oh, look, you're even, you're even so weak. You're shaking. You're about to faint. You're dying. <laughs> but last time I checked, it said 40 days. And then the temptation, okay, yeah, that's true. Let me just eat. And something else if you're on medication. Okay. So another way to break in your flesh. Go ahead. Um, I'm busy fasting and I'm on my seventh day. Mm. And one thing that I've that I've learned through this fast, I'm not doing water either. Like I'm doing it how Jesus did it, because I was like, okay, Jesus is within me. He did 40 days, so I can go, you know. And one thing that I've learned during this is even when you step into the fasting and that hungry spirit wants to take over or the anger wants to come in, pray it away. Like your spirit becomes so strong during the period of fasting. Like even everything, everything goes. I was at a birthday party two days ago <laughs> and I walked in and all I could see was spirit. I didn't even see people. Wow. And yeah, but, and, but it was the, I was like, oh my goodness, because I asked father, I was like, okay, father, please strengthen my spirit and also make me more aware, like open mm -hmm. my spiritual eyes more so that I can see more and then that's literally what's been happening and I'm like okay and now every time when a hunger tries to come over or a thirst or something someone's demon tries to come at me I literally I just say a prayer and it goes away that's perfect what mm -hmm. I'm reminded of of what you said is there was this time where you'll find that when you're fasting that's the time when you get the most birthday party invitations. That's the time oh the office decides to bring donuts and coffee. They've never brought donuts oh once. It's <laughs> so bad. All like, of a sudden, so many folks, the whole so office food. is bringing donuts. Next thing, your in-laws are inviting you to the biggest barbecue. <laughs> Next thing, your neighbor that you haven't seen in 20 years brings you a pie. <laughs> okay. Only when you're fasting. Only when you're fasting, it's just so like the devil comes in every type of anything that he can use, he will use whether it's from your family, your neighbor, mm -hmm. anything. He will yeah. try anything when you make the shift to God, yeah. to Jesus. Yeah. He will that's try anything. True. Yeah, that's true. And here's the thing, if you don't fast, it's not a sin. But if you do fast, oh benefits you will reap remember i think cheyenne or someone mentioned what you sow you will reap if you're sowing into spiritual things you're going to reap them if you're sowing into fasting and into prayer and into reading you're going to reap that okay the next thing following spiritual principles is a way to breaking your flesh okay what are these principles we read them in galatians write the fruits who did the task last week of studying matthew chapter six five i think it was five and six i don't remember which one it was i told you did anyone go and check it out yes okay how was it like for you it was it was good we did a study on it on the sermon on the mount five six and seven mm -hmm. not that one, but what stuck out to me this time was when Jesus was saying that you have to take the moat out of your own eye before you can help your kids. And I always thought it was like, oh, I shouldn't cast judgment on somebody else when like I'm doing the same thing. Because right before that, he talks about judging others. But since I've gone through deliverance, I'm like, wow, like it was there all along. I had to yeah. get this thing out of me because it also says that the um oh gosh like the light of somebody is in the eye yes. and, and I read that and I was like oh my gosh like I've read this so many times but 
now I get it, God. I have to get delivered from these things before I can go. Yeah. And am I going to cast demons out of people and heal the sick and, and go share the gospel? It's like I'm all messed up. Mm. Wow. Wow. Beautiful. So, yeah, okay, there she goes. She's reaped her benefit from what she sowed by reading those three chapters. Okay. So go back, read those three chapters. Those ones are going to teach you life on breaking the flesh. So easy. So simple, but easy. This thing's not hard, right? It's simple, but to the flesh, it's the most difficult thing. Remember, we spoke about it. Okay. Next thing, simple things like if you're praying, we spoke about the timer thing. These are simple things. There's like a million more things that God will give you, your own ways that God will give you. Okay. These are just stuff that I've learned. For instance, how many of you struggle or have ever struggled with when you're praying, either being on your knees or standing up or lifting up your hands? I definitely have. Okay. I remember one time I was praying like a while ago. And I felt like this weight mm -hmm. was just, it was like this weight that's like on your, like on me personally, I could feel like this weight just on my body. Mm -hmm. And I remember like I prayed for like at least like 45 minutes mm -hmm. and I just started crying. And then mm -hmm. it was like this weight was kind of lifted off of my shoulders. It's okay. hard to explain it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay. Felicia in the comments says me too, right? Guess what? Flesh will never want you to stand up in prayer. Flesh will never want you to lift up your hands. Because it's like, why? Right? It's like God's just going to accept it as it is. Right? Remember the right sacrifice offered the wrong way can be a problem. The right sacrifice offered the wrong way. Okay? Think about it. Cain and Abel. Think about it again. Saul and David. Saul thought the sacrifice was in monetary things or in, you know, that. But in reality, it was in obedience, in his posture even to approaching God. So I come just thinking, however, you know, I'm just praying. God's going to accept the prayer anyway, right? Think about this. What really stood out for me, I was reading the story of Cain and Abel this week. And it said that God had respect, right, for the one. And for the other, he didn't have respect because of the way their sacrifice was presented. So think about it. I come... Just like, I'm just going to come to God the way I want to. Mm. And just, it's just, it's prayer, right? All, all good and well. But just think about if your heart posture is, I'm coming to the king of glory. Who deserves my everything. Who deserves my knees. Who deserves my hands. Who deserves my shout. Right. I'm not going to if and, you know, a lot of times what stops people is also rejection because rejection will keep you conscious of who's looking at me and stuff like that. When you're in public, I'm talking about now when you're even alone at home. Right. Standing up when you're praying. OK, because it's so easy for the flesh to be like, I'm tired, I need to sit down. Right. Oh, I'm sleeping. This was, oh my word, this was mine for the longest time, ladies. For years, I would just lay in my bed, like just sleep <laughs> and pray. That was it. I was like, God, God is going to accept my prayer. Go, wow, right. But think about my posture was so wrong. Because if the president of the country was to walk in, I would certainly sit up straight. <laughs> I would make sure I'm dressed, my mouth is brushed, <laughs> and 
everything. I would make sure I am proper, right? If the king of England or whoever, think about it, the world, you would present yourself so good. But think about it, God, it's like, mm, you know, it's just whatever. No, oh, it's just, I'll just sit. Why do I have to be on my knees? Mm. <laughs> right? Think about it. Why is it that when we go into a job interview, our attitude, our posture is shifted? Right? You enter presentable. Same thing should be with our hearts. That even though my flesh wants to sleep and do all those things, I'm going to get up. I'm going to scream. I'm going to lift my hands up. So if you ever feel like you cannot lift your hands or whatever, rejection plays a big role in it. And pride too, because pride points to self. Hey, look, everybody's looking at me. No. <laughs> okay. So try that. Break it. Just say, oh, okay, I'll just put my hands up. I'll go on my knees. I fall on my face because in if you think about it realistically if Jesus had to walk into that room right now what do you think the first thing would be would you be like mm, it's just Jesus <laughs> oh my word no if Jesus had to walk none of us would be like oh it's just it's, oh what's up it's just him <laughs> I can just oh leave here. I'm just no leaving. Even. It's just Jesus. No. Whether you want to or not, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. Whether you want to or not, you will fall to your face because his glory. Who can? Who can? So. Comprehend. So that must even be my heart posture in my prayer my heart posture and my worship that I'm, I'm I'm going to the think about it when you have an appointment you can't miss I'm I'm going right to that same heart posture I'm going to to my king God he created me that's who I'm going to right now right simple things but it changes everything it makes walking in the spirit so easy because you don't have these things that the flesh is so used to fighting you because you've brought them under subjection okay and we're about to close another one that will help you exercise helps break the flesh your flesh will never want you to exercise never <laughs> Because it seems like the most hardest thing ever, right? I was sharing this with, I think, Morgan. Um, I think it was her. When you're at, when you're working out, okay? And for those of you who've ever worked out, ran, even just jogged, even just did something, you feel like you're at the point of death, Right? Like your whole breath is gone. Oh my word, I'm dying. <laughs> but you survived that. Guess what happens? When you are in your hardest battle spiritually or whatever, you will remember, I survived that. How much more this? Simple. So when you're putting your body through that exercise, remember it says that bodily exercise profits little, Right? It doesn't say it doesn't profit anything. So there is a profit, but there's a much more spiritual profit than that. So think about if how much you can achieve when exercising. Think about how much you can achieve spiritual things. So if my body feels like it's at the point of death when I'm exercising, telling me, oh, you can't do that anymore. If you do one more set or one more rep, you'll just faint. <laughs> And then you do that and just think about the feeling that comes with it, like, oh, yes, I did. But your body didn't want to do it. No. But you break it by saying, now we're going to do 
this because I even understand okay if I'm healthy if I'm pushing if I'm taking a walk one minute a day that's exercise right but if I do one minute I'm going to push more next time push more next time leading into my next point breaking the flesh persistence breaks resistance This has been my key to so many things. I literally live by this. Persistence breaks resistance. What does that mean? That means when I don't feel like showing up, I'm going to show up. That means when I don't feel like or think like whatever, I'm going to do it. I don't feel like waking up. I'm going to wake up. Persistence breaks that resistance. Just like when you're at the gym. Right when you're like weightlifting or whatever, you start with five pounds. That's all you can do. But you pressing in that persistence will break that resistance for you to lift bigger weights. So now in a month, it's 20. Next month, 30. But if I gave up at five, guess what? That's where my strength's going to stay. But if I persisted, I broke through. Persisted, I break. Persist, I break that resistance. Okay, persist a bit longer, I break it. I'm going to show up persisting in prayer. Persisting in my deliverance. Persisting in the word. That persistence breaks the resistance of the flesh. Okay. That persistence breaks the resistance of the flesh. And then it's become easier. May I please say something? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I was gonna say like I, I agree with you when you said when you mentioned about exercising yeah. and like everything else you said because when you exercise, you then become to know yourself more, as well, because mm -hmm. it's really like. When you exercise, you're really connecting your mind, your body, your spirit mm -hmm. as well. And I know for me personally, when I started my martial arts journey, like the like year after year, like I noticed myself like not even wanting to have the urge to like go out to parties just to be going out or just, just drinking just to be drinking. Because I know my consequence the next day will be like, uh, when I exercise, I'm gonna feel real. My body's gonna feel really, really bad, and I'm not gonna have no energy for class the next day. Mm -hmm. So, like even with exercising, you'll learn so much about your mind and your body to a point where you'll become more so health conscious and not want to put so much like garbage in your body or just go out just to be going out all the time. Yeah, because remember, your body, God still needs your body to do right. that that he's called you to do. So if mm -hmm. I am just eating whatever I want, thinking it's all good and well, I'm going to reap what I sow. That's, that's the reality of it. God still needs that body. I told someone that who was telling me they had an issue with smoking. I said, God needs that body. And then I said, is that spirit or flesh that you're doing? They're like flesh. So why are you investing into the flesh? Because in the long run, it's going to cause all the, let's even just talk about sickness, cancer, risk for cancer, all those things. I'm like, so then what? In 20 years, because if God wanted to do something specific with you, at that time but because you were sowing bad into the flesh guess what happened 
let me ask this. Who has a problem? Who has a struggle with either eating or like exercise? Okay, can you share? If you mind, if you don't, that's fine too. I was just going to share um, while you were talking. Since I've gotten delivered, and I'm sorry, I'm in the dark now because I'm getting ready for bed. Since I'm since I got delivered, um, I my body used to be like part of my identity somehow. Like it was, a t it was it was all one together. But since I got delivered, mm -hmm. I feel like my body is like this separate resource. And I'm like, I take care of my house. Mm -hmm. I replace things. I refresh it. Yeah. I update it. I keep it working. I keep all the things in the house working. You know, I never let anything go. And I'm like, I'm suddenly I'm seeing my body as a resource, like mm -hmm. all the other resources I have. And uh, praise God just that's been since I got delivered. So, um, and, and I'm that's doing, amazing. I'm doing a fast right now too. That's so amazing. That's beautiful. Was, appreciated you sharing. So yeah, I'm just so thankful. And for, um, the gal that shared about since she got delivered and she had that revelation, mm -hmm. I appreciate that she shared, I'm having the same experience. I'm reading God's word with whole new joy. And, uh, it's so beautiful now. Like it's, it's so different. It's amazing. I just, so I appreciate that you helped me get delivered. You and Christy. Amen. It was all Jesus. Hey, just thank him. It was yeah. literally, it's all yeah. him. <laughs> Amen. But we're so happy. We're happy. Um, well, Christy, I can see her there smiling and Sonia too, because they were there with you. Sonia too, yes. And who else was there? Um three of us, right? Yes. I, I thought I think there was your first station there was somebody else. But yeah, anyway. Um, no, yeah. we're really happy to hear that. That's just that's Thank just you. God. What that's what he does. He literally comes in, delivers, helps, yes. sets free. Yeah. To see you smiling that's man that's just fantastic. yeah it's it's really been fun to read the word now and uh yeah and I remember that's something you had a struggle with like the weeks yeah. before you came in so yes I did I didn't you know and I I wasn't really aware of it I just oh. until until you know then I realized I needed to get delivered and I realized how much the demons were holding me down yeah. from a lot of things yeah so. And that's true. A lot of the issues, even that you see you struggle with, a lot of times when you go through deliverance, it removes so many, like, yeah, I'm telling, I'm telling everybody, I'm yep. telling everybody. Yep. yep. I've already got two <laughs> girlfriends coming to you guys. Oh, praise God. <laughs> so one of them's got an appointment on Friday. The other one, um, I'm working on her. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. That's really, you see, that's that's literally what it's about. That once we get free, we go out and start helping. Exactly. People. I just oh, told now her. Now you're producing fruit. That's good. Yeah. The other night I said, this is just like what happened with the disciples. People got <laughs> delivered and they went out and they couldn't shut up about it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's that true. exciting. <laughs> That's great. That's really amazing to hear. Um, I even lost my train of thought now. I, I was just so kind of off on a tangent. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. But yes, try that 100% for sure, right? Exercise will help you greatly, even changing, even if it's just changing a little bit of what you eat. With the focus of not even, oh, I want to look so good and all of that, that's good. With the focus of God needs this body for what he wants me to do. So I'm going to make sure that when the time comes, I don't, I'll ask Shami. That, Shami, do you remember there was this time, there was this girl I told you about who I met at the dance studio in LA. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. And 
she was overweight, like diagnosed by the oh, doctor. Yeah, I do. And I would see her in this dance studio, right? Every day. I was like, how often do you come here? She's like, every day. I'm like, why? She's like, oh, because I'm training for when I become a superstar, right? I was like, what? <laughs> She's like, yeah, I'm going to be the biggest artist in the world. And I'm like, oh, oh okay, cool. Mm -hmm. And she was like, yeah, but I have to start now because when, I'm the, when I become a superstar, I cannot start losing weight or training then. At that time, I just have to walk into whatever. Of course, that was, you know, she was part of a carnal system and stuff like that. But think about someone's mind like that, that she's already starting today so that when her time comes for whatever she was going to do, she was just going to just walk into it. She wasn't going to wait. And then when the time comes, it's like, for instance, God tells you, hey, you're going to be a preacher. What are you going to do now? Oh, but I, I don't have a crowd. Oh, okay. I can put some pillows there and preach to the pillows. <laughs> I know it's like, it's crazy, but do you get what I mean? Because if I'm scared of public speaking and I'm not changing that now, but I have to be a preacher, what's going to happen? I cannot wait to become a preacher and then start, no. So that's what that girl said. She said, no. Nope. I'm starting today, right now. And I was like, okay. But that, what she shared with me, I, it changed me. I was like, wow. If someone of the world can think like that, what about a child of God? How much more for us who have God, we have the Holy Spirit, how much more? We don't even have to do it by our own self. We have God. <laughs> So I want you this week to go back, write those things, track those things, sit, evaluate, right? Because it's all good. We can do, I don't want us next year, Bible study, right? It's not going to be, we're not going to come over the same issues again. But it's going to be a testimony of, oh my word, look, this was where I was. I sat that down. I took it serious. I wrote it down. I said, nope. What am I going to do about it? Because I cannot cast out self-discipline, lack of self-discipline. <laughs> That's a decision that someone has to come make and say, I'm going to be disciplined no matter how hard. And what more of a perfect time because it's early in the year, right? <laughs> Not that we are moving with that or confined to that. I just think about it. Right. Okay. I'm going to be disciplined. I'm going to walk one minute and it's fine. I'm going to miss a day or so. It's cool. I'm not going to fall. I'm going to get back up. I'm going to eat healthy. Someone may want to be radical and get rid of everything in their fridge. Okay. <laughs> Someone else may take it step by step, but do something. This week, do something despite who said stuff to you, right? Like the lady that she shared earlier, despite what her family said about her not going to school or college, do something. Despite what people say about me not getting a job, my business failing, apply for that job, do something. Okay, I've been trying to lose the weight. I've been trying to gain weight for some people, whatever it is, do something. I've been trying to write. I have these ideas in my brain. I just, I need to write. I want to share, do something. I don't have a crowd yet. That's okay. Make a video, post it, share, talk about God. Do something. And the more you persist, the more you, you think you're waiting on God. I'll say it again. A lot of times you'll discover that God's waiting on you. Waiting on you to change. Waiting on you to say, okay, I'm just going to start doing it. Waiting on you to just say, okay, I'll just change what I'm eating. Something that simple. Breaking the flesh. Because the more I say yes to the flesh, the less I say yes to the spirit.
remember there's not a both thing it's not a it's not a balanced thing no it's going to be hard but remember we have christ we can do all things through him who strengthens us so in reality no it's not going to be difficult because i have christ and he strengthens me okay before we pray tonight and hop off here does anyone want to share or ask a question I just want to say I've truly been blessed listening to the Bible study tonight. It's really, um, really applied to me in so many different ways. So I just want to say thank you. Amen. Thanks, I'm everyone. So happy. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. I just want to say this, like this Bible study night was really, really, really good. And, uh, I mean, it, it, it's it's just so true. Like, like recently, the past two months, I've really been like, you know, taking a real hard realization and looking at my life, looking at like, you know, like you said, the places where I need more discipline. And it's so true that God really does. He's He's waiting for us to stop, and and change those the fleshly habits and those things like yeah. like I remember I used to come in every every single Sunday like oh it's like you know like just about like the food like you know just like those fleshly things and I needed discipline I didn't need a what is that Can you hear me? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. And what did you do about it when you came in? Okay. What did I What did I ask you? About my flesh. Yeah. Every single time. When you came in crying every time. And wh what did I say? What did I ask you? I said, Cheyenne, what are you going to do about it? Oh, yeah. That's what, yeah. Every single right? time. Right? <laughs> so, she would come crying. Okay, I'm like, cool. First couple of times we do deliverance. After that, I'm like, oh, what are you gonna do about it? Yeah. The and what thing you is, do? you can't you can get deliverance all day long, every single day. But if you're not gonna do something about it, if you're not gonna be, you know, like if you're not gonna deny your flesh, there's no point in getting that deliverance. There's no point yeah. in it. And like, I just like, I've really been just being a doer and of the word and being like, you know what? Like, I'm going to deny my flesh. I'm going to be disciplined. Mm -hmm. I'm going to, I'm going to work out, you know, every day. Maybe I take a couple of days off, but That's I still mm -hmm. get back up or I might have a bad meal one time or, or a couple of days, one, two, three days. But then I'll be like, okay, I'm getting back up and I'm staying disciplined at this. And share what happened when you did fall. And remember the time you went to, not fall like in a bad way, but like <laughs> fall with like what you were doing. When I think yeah. you went to Florida and you said like, with like you weren't consistent with like what you were eating and working yeah, out. Yeah, then, then the guilt. After, yeah. The condemnation, the shame, and what that does is it tries to keep you in that spot. It tries to make you think, you know, like bring that that condemnation, that guilt, and then you feel so bad, you know. Yep. But but the thing is, like the righteous man falls seven times, but gets back up. Mm -hmm. He gets back up, and he stays disciplined. He he keeps practicing the spiritual things, and what condemnation does. You know, it, it got me down to where that guilt and shame, and then it made you like want to keep doing it, you know. But you've got to get up out of that that guilt, that condemnation, that shame, and keep going because, you know, I I just realized that I was in that cycle of like just I'd fall, and then I'd be like, oh, 
Well, you know, and then sometimes I'd stay down. Mm. But now I understood what the devil was doing. Mm. So if I fall, I'm like, okay, I'm just going to get back up, you know? And then I've reaped the benefits of that, like going into the spirit more than the flesh. And it's really changed my life. Like just working out and then watching my portions and stuff and not letting guilt condemnation if I fall, like Mm -hmm. I've, I've lost weight. I've, I've seen the, you know, more muscle, like more energy. Like I've just seen like the spiritual benefits of it. Like I'm sowing what I've been reaping Mm. and I've realized if you continue to do good, like the Bible says, if you continue to do good and don't lose heart, you will reap those benefits. Yeah. So I just wanted to share that because, like, because I don't know if anyone else has gone through that, that, mm-hmm. you know, I, I hope it helps somebody. I mean, it definitely will. It definitely will. I agree with that. Anyone else want to share anything? I I wanted to share this early, so yeah. I'm so sorry. We're getting late, but when you had mentioned um, Abel and Cain, I'm I'm rereading that part of the Bible too, and something I noticed in the sacrifice that Abel gave, and I've never noticed it before, but it says he gave the first um, flocklings mm-hmm. to God. And the fat thereof. And Cain just gave fruit is what it says. Yeah. And I thought about, like animals require constant care and attention. Mm-hmm. They get sick. They wander off. You have to go find them. Like fruit just grows where it grows and it needs water and yeah. sunlight. And God provided those things. Mm-hmm. So what work was Cain actually putting into <laughs> this and then if you think about that spiritually like Jesus gives us peace he gives us joy he gives us all these things but what work are we willing to put in to walk in the spirit and give God the best sacrifice of praise and give him the best prayer and the first fruits of our own life Mm -hmm. wow that's beautiful that is so beautifully said amen wow she just wrapped it all up so um, I know we have to go so we'll just get into prayer right now for a couple of minutes I want what I want you ladies to do tonight is to just take a minute just think about the areas that you've been struggling with okay where you've been struggling with either distractions self-discipline procrastination whatever it is, okay? I just want you to just take a moment, just think about these things. Most importantly, I want you to think about the consequences of these things, how they're impacting you. Because without having understanding on what this is doing to you, it's it's pointless, Okay, you're going to like the idea of change, but you're not going to want it and pursue it if you don't understand. Okay. So just take a moment and just, you know, you know those things. If you want to write them down, if it makes it easy, whatever it is. And I just want you to pray.
Okay. Now that you've thought about those things, aren't you within your heart to also understand where you want to be? Okay. What is it that you want? What is it that you want God to do in you as a vessel? Okay. What are the areas that you've been struggling to walk in the spirit? Is it love? Is it wisdom? Is it self? Is it, and this is what you're going to also do for the week. Okay. So let's just pray. Mighty and everlasting Father, we come before you. Thank you for this day. Lord, right now we ask for help. We need help to walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. We cannot do anything without you, Lord. We humbly come to you today with prayer, with petition, with supplication as we cry out in the areas that we are seeking for change, no matter how small we may think it is. Lord, we know that you can change anything. So right now I pray, Lord, that you empower each and every woman on this call. Empower them, Lord, with your spirit that allows us to stand even when their will, when their will is weakened. I ask you for strength, Lord. Not our own strength, but strength that comes from you, your strength. Strength to get up, strength to do something. Strength to resist the devil, but most importantly, strength to submit to you. Somebody just say, I submit to you, Lord. I submit to you, Lord. I submit to your instruction. I submit to your will. I submit to your direction. I cannot do it by my own, Lord. I need you. To walk in the spirit, I need you. Just let that be your prayer. Just take a moment, just pray. Pray in the spirit. Pray to him. Sitalari ende bomokoshi tema. Asi teli ende rikama ande lipe maya sitema. Ya katali ende ripo moyende. Rikataba maya ande lima. Saye shiteka asi teli ende ripo moye. Give me the strength, Lord, that as I go about my day, that I will rely on you, your ability, that I will not rely on myself. Asi teka. Give me discipline, Lord. I want to be disciplined for your glory. Disciplined with what you've called me to do. Disciplined in my home. Disciplined as a wife, as a mother, as a sister, as a friend, as an employee. Disciplined as a servant. Teach me, Lord, ways. Reveal unto me things and areas that I do not see that you're trying to work on me. And today I say, Lord, I yield. I will obey you, Lord. I will obey you, Lord. I will serve you, Father. With all that is within me, I want to serve you. Just pray that prayer. Zishite ande, azite keli araba mahasetem, koteli ende pamaya, ye katali ende pama. Holy Spirit, may your fruit be manifest in my life. I want to bear good fruits. 
of love, gentleness, meekness, long-suffering, Lord. I break every tie, every yoke of bondage that the enemy has kept me chained from doing the things that you have called me to do. I break every form of laziness, procrastination, fear, anxiousness that has stopped me from living and doing what you have called me to do. Lord, be glorified in my life that when people see me, they will see your work. They will see your power. They will see your ability. I break every mental stronghold. I pull it down strongholds over the mind that have kept the minds of these listeners in prison. Strongholds and lies. We pull down every fortress of lies that has been used as a weapon of the enemy to destroy them and to keep them back. Every spirit set to destroy, every spirit set forth to cause havoc, to cause loss, to cause stagnation. We bind your power. I command you to come out of every person here, every spirit, every mind control spirit out of the life right now. Come out of Frederica, every mind control spirit that keeps her in chains and in cycles and in loops. I command you to come out of her right now in Jesus' mighty name. Every spirit of rejection that keeps me from serving you, Lord. Every spirit of rebellion that keeps me from serving you, Lord. Somebody just pray that prayer and say, Lord, deliver me speedingly according to your word. According to your word, Lord, I do not want to remain the same in this year. I do not want to remain the same. I command every body to be healed, every disease to be healed, every sickness to be healed. In Jesus' mighty name. Somebody just pray and say, Lord, thank you for changing me. For your glory. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord Jesus. I thank you for the life of each and every listener here. Every lady, every woman on this call, Lord, I pray you bless them. I pray you increase them. I pray you help them, Lord. Help them that they may become and walk in the purpose that you have called and ordained for them that their present situations and circumstances, Lord, will never cause them or stop them from seeing and believing and knowing what you have ordained for them. Help them to become change in the world. Help them to become the change in their families in their friends, in their homes, in their circles. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Thank you so much, ladies, for joining. Somebody just say, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Let's just thank him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I look forward to speaking to you guys. Not guys, but ladies. <laughs> I look forward to speaking to you beautiful ladies next Tuesday, same time, same link. Message me if you have any questions. Feel free to message me at any time. For more information, check out our website at mosthopedeliverance.com. 
and I will see you soon. Bye.